there's something that we can all probably agree on, and that is that lettering is indeed the bread and butter of embroidery. Almost every logo has some form of lettering on it. In fact, it's a part of a logo that we typically critique the most because anyone can have a slight different variation or an interpretation of a cat or a flower or another component of a logo, but we all know what lettering should look like. We've all seen it every single day of our life. We know what a letter R should look like, what a letter M should look like. So we typically critique that part of the logo the most. So it's very important when you are doing logo design that you have the world's best embroidery lettering. And at Wukong, we're famous for our lettering. It's not just because of the stitch algorithm, but it's because of the tools we give you to build the lettering that you need for your embroidery and logo design. So let's dive a little bit deeper into the lettering capabilities of Wilcom Embroidery Studio 2025. Now it's really simple to add embroidery lettering in Wilcom. On the left-hand side, click the lettering tool, then click on screen and simply type the lettering you want to have and press enter. It will automatically generate the lettering for you in stitches. Now if we go right-click and object properties, in the Properties Object dialog box, you can see all the settings related to that lettering object. First of all, the text that you've created. So if you want it to be on two lines, you can simply put it on two lines and click Update, or bring it back to a single line. You can select the font, and we have hundreds of professionally digitized fonts for you. And we even give you the recommended height, so you know that uh, this font here works best between 10 and 20 millimeters. But in addition to the hundreds of Wilcom fonts that we've got built into the software, sometimes your customer comes with a unique logo that they've created or that their graphic designer has created using a true type font. Now, when you don't have a matching Wilcom embroidery font to align to the true type font, you generally have to digitize that manually. Well, not with Wilcom, because with Wilcom, we also support true type font. So if you get that true type font and install that on your computer, then any Windows font can be available as embroidery font and it will automatically convert that to editable embroidery lettering for you, saving you hours of digitizing time. So let's bring that back to a standard Wilcom font. We'll bring it back to college. Now, as we scroll down, we have other options in your dialog box as well you have the ability to control the height. So if I want that to be a little bit smaller, I can say make that eight millimeters. Or of course you can drag it with your resize handles on screen as well. And it will resize that lettering for you dynamically. As we go down, we also have some baseline settings. By default, the lettering is straight, but you have a choice of different baselines to pick from. You can arc it clockwise. You can arc it counterclockwise or choose more the circle clockwise if you're wrapping it around an object or any shape. And with any shape and using your reshape tool, you can plot nodes along your baseline by right click or left clicking. And then you pick up those nodes and you can create any shape for your lettering to follow. So it can wrap around to match exactly as per the artwork from your customer. Let's take that back to a straight line. We also have justification capabilities. So it can be left justified, right justified, a center or full justification, just like you would in a graphics program or a word processor. And then you have your spacing options. Now by default, the space between each letter in Wilcom is 10% of the height of that embroidery. So if it's exactly 10 millimeters high, then my default spacing will be 10% or one millimeter between each individual letter. Now that can change slightly based on the kerning options you've got set up for your um, for your font. Because as you know, a, a very straight letter like an L and an I sitting next to each other might have a different kerning to a A and a V where they have to move into each other because of the angle of that character. Now you can adjust your spacing here by um, just typing in a new value. So make it be 20% of the height, and then you get greater spacing between each letter. 
You can even control the spacing between the word. By default, it is 60% of the height. I might want it to be 200%, and it will create a greater spacing between the word. And likewise, if there's multiple lines as well, you can adjust the spacing on screen by typing it into that dialog box. But if I undo those changes, another way for you to adjust your spacing is to use the reshape tool. With your lettering selected, select reshape in the top left corner, and you'll notice above each letter is a small pink diamond. That is your handle to select each individual letter. So if you want to adjust the spacing, say, between the W and the I, you can just pick up the W and you can move it out. You can do one letter at a time, or you can select groups of letters and drag them out as well. You can also adjust the overall spacing of your lettering, if I undo those changes, by again going back to reshape, and you'll see at the end of your embroidery object will be this handle that you can drag it out, and it will proportionally adjust the spacing either in or out, depending which direction you drag that, that line. And of course, you've got your baseline that while you're in the reshape mode, you can pick up that baseline and you can angle that in any direction you want. If it was a free line, again, you could add additional nodes along that and shape that to match the curve of your artwork. So let's undo that and bring that back to our standard straight letter. We'll now take what we've just learned with that basic simple lettering and we'll apply lettering to an existing logo that we've already created. So I'll go up and I'll open my design and we'll grab this design here. And for this artwork, I want to create some curved text on the bottom of the artwork, which is the location. It might be a souvenir shirt for a famous cafe here in Sydney. So I'll click on my lettering tool and I'll type in Sydney, Australia. We'll put on TrueView to make that a little bit easier to see. And I'll just drag that and position that in the center of the embroidery. Now at the moment, it's a straight text. Uh, the first thing I want to adjust is the height and the style of that, of that lettering. The style of the block two doesn't really match the theme of that logo. So I'll go back up to my object properties and from the font selector, and I'll scroll through and find a font that I want to match my design. And I think flares is a good choice. Okay, now I'll adjust the center again and the height's a little bit too big. So I might bring that down to eight millimeters. And now what I wanna do, I wanna curve that text so it matches the curvature of that logo. So I'll change my baseline and I'll choose arc counterclockwise so that circle matches the curve of my logo. And you'll see by default, it doesn't really match the logo. It's taken a standard curve shape. I'll first of all adjust the spacing and I want it to be about there below my logo. I think that's a decent gap from the side there. But of course the curve of this text doesn't match the curve of the circle logo. So with your reshape tool selected, you might notice above the lettering, up here there is a small yellow rectangle. Grab hold of that, and as you drag it up, you're adjusting the curve of that baseline. So visually, align it to where you want it to be, which I think looks pretty good there, and let it go. And now it's gone through and adjusted that curve to match the look and feel of my logo. Just like before, I'm free to adjust the spacing. So I can press B on my keyboard, box in. Again, using my reshape tool, I can pick up those letters. Sydney, maybe bring that a little bit closer to that full stop. I can turn on my grid so I can see is my S and A. Yeah, they're pretty much on the same height, so they're okay. I might want to adjust a little bit of the kerning there. Again, you're free to go and make as many changes as you want using the reshape tool or by using the spacing settings here in the dialog box. And I'm pretty happy with that. So that design is now ready to go. Now there are other options which affect the sequencing of how that lettering stitches out on your machine. And you might want to change that depending on what sort of job you're doing or to maybe minimize the amount of traveling that occurs on your machine. And to illustrate those, I've got a sample design set up over here. 
Now, if I select this top lettering object and scroll down to the sequencing option in my lettering dialog box, there are a whole stack of different options available. There's first of all the inline option where it will sew from left to right or from right to left. I can choose to do center out, which is great for caps. It can do one whole half of the lettering first, the other whole half of the lettering, or it can do one letter at a time. Again, depending on the sort of job you're doing. If it's multiple line text, it can stitch from the top to the bottom, from the bottom to the top, or from top and snaking down in a snake pattern. Again, depending on the sort of job you might be doing. So let me put that back to the default left to right option for this object. Click OK. And then I'm going to start the slow redraw, which is Shift R on your keyboard. And it will now go through and stitch that embroidered design. This one is from left to right, then right to left. Then it's doing center out. and then center out letter by letter. Then multi-line from top to bottom. Multi-line from bottom to top. And multi-line in a snake pattern, which again is just minimizing the movement on your machine. So stitching it down like a snake sequence. So the final section of lettering that I'd like to walk you through is what we call lettering art we can be a little bit more creative with your lettering objects. First of all, again, put your text on screen. I'll do the text walk on. And we'll make it red and make it a little bit larger on screen. First of all, choose your font. Uh, we'll scroll up and I might once again grab college. And then we'll scroll down to the lettering art section. Now, lettering art are basically predefined envelope shapes that you can attach to any of your lettering objects. So we can have like a bubble effect or curve effect or a straight with a arc effect or this effect. Once you apply those effects, of course, you can go into reshape mode and you can modify those. So if the arc is too much or not enough, you can adjust it. And of course, at any point in time, you can resize or reset to a brand new arc or curve. Again, the choice is yours. There's a preset in the software. Once you create them, use your reshape tool and you can adjust any of those options yourself to get the lettering shape and perspective that you're looking for.